So about a decade ago, I switched to becoming a sustainable builder. And what gives me hope now is how much things have changed in those last 10 years. This group is evidence of that. We have come so far, and, and we've done it by going together. And that's absolutely awesome. 10 years ago, when I said that I built rammed earth, so I would get, what, you do, what? And they wouldn't, couldn't even hear what I was saying. It was so alien. Now, most people that I talk to say, oh yeah, I've heard of that. Sort of like straw bale, right? Well, <laughs> no, but you've heard of it, that's cool. Uh, and now they just want to know how to pronounce Aracura. Well, you know, can't do everything. I've been having people come through my house over this last decade, and we now have regular four times a year tours. What I'm about to share with you are some of the comments and questions that we have had over and over. We get hundreds of people coming through, and we've heard certain questions and comments so many times. I'm really starting to get a good database. This is what I'm going to share with you. Comment number one. Almost everybody who walks in the door has this, in some way, they express, this was not what I was expecting. I don't know what they were expecting. Maybe it was a mud hut, maybe it was a hobbit hole, I don't know. But the reality blows them away. This is a beautiful, light-filled space that anybody would be delighted to live in. <laughs> uh, I would say that 90% of the people who come through the door put their hands on the wall at some point. I, I'm lucky if they ask. I've had people, I've caught people, I come around the corner and they're hugging my walls. It's, it's a little creepy. <laughs> but I think some of the people who ask, they're looking to find out, how stable is this? Well, it's incredibly stable. Every once in a while, I'll get somebody and they find a little place and they kind of go, oh, look, I, I, I got three grains of, of sand coming off this. And I said, yeah, congratulations. That's, you know, three grains of sand this week. And maybe there was one grain of sand that somebody else got off at the last tour. But keep rubbing, you know, if you're lucky, you'll get another grain or two. It really is incredibly stable. And it's not like I'm sweeping up the sand. It just, it's actually the cleanest house I've ever lived in. And this is the most shared uh, Instagram picture that we've ever done. It's a mistake. Because <laughs> of this lovely, whoops. Where'd it go? This lovely mistake. <laughs> anyway, very cool that we don't call mistakes, we call character. <laughs> Man, this one I get from everybody. And well, it's the easy comment. You come into somebody's house, of course you're going to say it's beautiful. But there's this tone of surprise. Well, it's beautiful. Well, yeah. You've seen the pictures. You've come through the door. You've been on our website. You've checked out our Instagram. I know you've done all these things. Why are you surprised? Oh, yeah, we get this one a lot. So just like concrete, right? No, no, it's really not. It's not made like concrete. It doesn't even look like concrete. And it does not act like concrete. This is a completely different substance. It's not brittle because it's made from a chemical process. It's ductile. Uh, it, it can absorb a bullet and not crack. In the Middle East, you want to hide from everything that's going on. You go into a rammed earth building. And I've had that directly from vets who've been there. It's also sustainable in comparison to concrete. We'll get back to some of, uh, you know, how sustainable it is and, and some of that, but keep in mind that this is not concrete. One of the biggest things about it is that this is an incredibly durable substance. And that's part of what makes it very sustainable. So how is it made? Well, it's dirt, it is subsoil, 
and it gets shoveled into forms and compacted with pneumatic tampers until it's back to stone. Really simple process, as long as you do it right. It's just like nature does, this top one, that's nature doing it over, you know, maybe a few million years, and that's us doing it over a few days. And it's a little bit stronger than Mother Nature. I went and started rubbing my hands over Mother Nature's rocks, I get a few more than that one or two or three grains of sand. Oh, how does it stand up with Canadian weather? Well, we all want to know that. Uh, we just had a tour in February, uh, which was a perfect time for it. The driveway was a lovely luge track for all the people driving in, and the uh, snow and sleet was flying, and everybody shivered as they wandered in and then said, oh, well, this is, this is great. But they still asked, how does it stand up to the weather? And I think there's a sense that when you hear that earth in the rammed earth, you think, oh, it's going to erode like earth. Uh, I actually did a YouTube video, which you know you can check out on our website, um, that it, is entitled, Why Does Rammed Earth Not Wash Away in the Rain? So I, I'm not going to belabor this point. You can definitely go check that out on your own. But the reality is that our rammed earth, because we've stabilized it and put waterproofing agent in, is waterproof. It does not seem to notice all the freeze-thaw cycles, it, nothing changes with the rammed earth. And then around the globe, there are examples of rammed earth that have been standing there for thousands of years in all kinds of climates. The Great Wall of China is mostly rammed earth. And if you look at even the, the least maintained parts of that, out in the desert, they get snow, they get rain, and they were not being built with pneumatic tampers. And they did not have any stabilizing agents in them. And they're still standing. So I, I think we're probably pretty good on this one. Which brings us to, well, yeah, it's lovely and warm in here, in the middle of winter. And there's that feeling, oh, you know, you have to, you're hiding your furnace somewhere, or you're, you must be burning, you must have a wood stove that you aren't showing us. No, we really don't. Most of our heat comes from the sun. And it's a bit of a disturbing thought that here in Canada, we don't get that thermal mass is a thing that works, that solar gain is something you can use for free heat. That's there's definitely something wrong if we're not using the greatest, simplest source of heat available. And there's definitely that sense that, well, if you're going to build sustainably, you must be sacrificing something, right? N no way. This is the most comfortable, permanently warm place to live. The, the temperature stays constant year-round because of the thermal mass. All of that rammed earth there is hanging on to that heat and staying warm. When the, the power goes out, we don't even notice until I notice that the microwave has started blinking again. And then in the summer, we have our summer one. Again, they come in and, oh, lovely air conditioning in here. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, we don't have an air conditioner. There is absolutely no need for an air conditioner in a rammed earth house. Those same walls with all of that thermal mass are going to stay exactly the same temperature through the summer as well. You may find, as in this situation, that you do get some sun coming in. Maybe you don't have it perfectly shaded, but you have it shaded enough that only a little sun comes in because the sun gets higher, you have some overhangs, you can limit how much sun comes in. But the sun that comes in gets absorbed by the rammed earth. And then in the nighttime, you open up your operable windows, have nice passive ventilation, it cools down the walls, and you're back to, the walls are, you know, it's about 20 degrees. It just stays that way. In the summer, it goes from about, you know, 20 to 24 degrees and does that in the winter as well. Thermal mass, it's amazing. It's so quiet. 
there's a, a quality to the quiet in a rammed earth house. I know that a lot of you build passive houses and people will comment about how quiet it is in a passive house. This is quiet like that. And then there's something else. I'm not sure what. It smells so fresh. Oh yeah, it really does. It's not living with that smell of dirt. It just smells really nice. And partly it's that constant humidity. Not only what, can you fill that bathtub with water and not get the windows steaming up, but the guitars stay in tune. And nothing says perfect humidity like that. What do the building inspectors say? Oh, everybody wants to know about that. Actually, we found that the building inspectors are generally really cool about this. And something to keep in mind for all of us is that building officials care about what they do. They are trying to improve the built environment as much as we are. They just maybe don't have as much information about it as we do. A little bit of education going, but obviously because rammed earth isn't in the building code, that engineer stamp eases a lot of uh, worries. Yeah, it really is. I think when people say that, they're trying to put their finger on what it is about being in rammed earth, and I, I can't put my finger on it either. It just, it's a lovely place to be. Can it be pacifist? Yeah, sure. Uh, it's, uh, Terrell and I actually did a paper at a conference, a pacifist conference a few years ago, pointing out that the simplicity of the rammed earth wall is partly what made it really good. You've got the continuous thermal insulation that goes all the way around all the openings, all around corners, and there are no thermal bridges. It's airtight. It's, uh, it's the perfect rammed or, uh, passive house wall. You can also, of course, do Nat Zero Living Building Challenge. has no uh, red list. It's red list certified and so on. That was an interesting one. I think that people have a sense that you can only do certain things. N no, you can't. It's limited only by the imagination and of the architect and perhaps the pocketbook of the client. What should we be building with rammed earth? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> Museums, libraries. I can bring a, a moldy, a uh, box of books down from the cottage where they've been for a couple of decades, leave them in the house for a while, they smell great. Clearly, schools, community centers, let's build healthy for our children, for our communities. Uh, indigenous housing, it's from the earth, it's building with the land. This, there's a tremendous connection there. And multi-unit dwellings, these are the best ram, uh, party walls you've ever seen. Just um, to give you a sense of height, this is one wall and it starts up here, it goes down two stories, it keeps going and it goes down to the basement right there. It's a three story wall, freestanding, no problem. You can go five stories, this is, which is what the scale of human existence. The acoustics are great. We get this from professional musicians. Uh, this is a rammed earth studio. This is why my husband agreed to let me build rammed earth in the first place. Is I said, I'm going to build you the best music studio ever. And I did. Mm -hmm. It really is quite amazingly good acoustics. Those guitars that stay in tune, also really so great. You just walk down, you pick up the guitar, and you start playing. You don't have to play that tuning song for the first 10 minutes. And when you get somebody on the drums and you get some of the guitars plugged in, you can hear everybody. The perfect sound separation. Really cool. I think with this one, they're definitely trying to figure out, is it, you know, is this really legit? And, and it is. Um, you can see that we've been here long enough, we're starting to build up clutter. But those rammed earth walls are completely unchanged. I th this one's like the, oh, it's so beautiful. Um, <laughs> they're a little bit surprised that the walls look so much like art. But you know, by then, they've been there long enough. They, they really know that 
the walls are beautiful and they do have a lot of character. What's it like to live here? Well, it is the most comfortable building I have ever been in, bar none. It's also affordable. Uh, we're living on a, a single pension income because we can. And that means that our energy bill is less than half of uh, the Ontario average. Uh, it kind of works out. You have maybe a little bit higher mortgage to start, but not much. But wow, you're saving on the energy forever. Oh, these walls have character. Don't all walls have to be flat and maybe white and featureless? <laughs> and doesn't that just make you want to go out and buy stuff at Walmart and fill the space? No, we don't do that. We just enjoy the walls. <laughs> I, I, it's actually kind of funny how often I get this comment. <laughs> but you look at the depth of those walls, yeah, zombies aren't getting through that. But the reality is that we're facing an apocalypse that's a little more realistic than zombies, and Rammed Earth is up for that too. The things that we know we're going to get through climate change, floods, fires, Insects, I mean, we may be losing the bees, but the termites are all over climate change. Extreme weather, heat waves, power outages, mentioned that. You want to be in a rammed earth building when the climate crisis gets real. This is a big one, what does it cost? Yeah, um, it's not expensive. It costs somewhat more to build rammed earth walls than it would to build another type of wall system. But if you're going to build a high performance house, rammed earth is a fantastic bargain because of that simplicity, because of that single crew that comes in and does it all. All of those layers that need to be there and are often having to be installed by different people, different crews, are all done by one crew and it's done. You've done everything from the outside finish to the inside finish and everything in between. And it fits perfectly into any uh, custom building. I think that's something, that the return on investment, that slight bit of extra that you have to pay, gets uh, paid back in energy. So, mm -hmm. why doesn't everybody build this way? And many, many people, as they're leaving our house, make exactly this comment. So why aren't we swept off our feet building hundreds of these every year? Because the reality is that change, and this is different, change is hard. People find change to be a difficult thing to do. But we also know that change is absolutely necessary. If we don't change, we're in big trouble. We all know that. That's why we're here. That's why we're passionate about what we do. And change is happening. And we're making it happen. Thank you.